natural family planning and using it to avoid or to get pregnant, what you should know. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. I'm a fertility doctor and every day I talk about your period and your cycles and ovulation and what you should know to try to get pregnant or conversely, what maybe you want to know if you're trying to avoid pregnancy. So today I'm diving into one of my favorite topics, which is natural family planning or NFP, which really all centers around fertility awareness methods, understanding your cycle, your body when you ovulate, and this can be used to help you get pregnant. So if you're trying to get pregnant, knowing your body and your cycle better will help or conversely to try to not get pregnant. If you are looking for options that are alternative to normal traditional or hormonal contraceptive options. So this channel exists so you can learn about your body. Would love it if you would subscribe so we can help spread our message to more people. All right, so natural family planning in short is understanding your cycle and knowing when to or to not have intercourse. I am going to break down a few of the ways, both well-known and then some kind of easier ways. But first, in order to dive into any of that, we do have to go over the menstrual cycle and what it is, and also how successful is this. So let's just jump to it. So what are the success rates of natural family planning if you're using it for contraception? So not to try to get pregnant, but using it to try to prevent a pregnancy. One important thing whenever we look at literature about trying to get pregnant is we look at typical and perfect use, meaning not everybody does everything perfectly. A good example is the birth control pill. Perfect use is taking the pill at exactly the same time every day and never missing a pill. Typical use is how more people use it, which is sometimes forgetting a pill or not taking it at the same time. So just in general, if we look at this chart, we're going to see a few differences. And this is percentage of people who have a pregnancy within the first year of perfect or typical use. So you can see spermicides, those type of things are not great. Condoms, if used perfectly, can be, but if not used perfectly, you can have 18% of people getting pregnant in a year. Same thing with the withdrawal method, that good old fashioned withdrawal, 22% of people are gonna get pregnant is typical use. Now those are two to 4% with perfect use. So I'm not saying that if you are not diligent, you could utilize condoms or the withdrawal method, and that could be relatively effective contraception. Of course, you can clearly see that the things we think about when we think about contraception, the birth control pill, IUDs, implants, getting your tubes tied, those are going to be the most successful options if you're really wanting to prevent a pregnancy. And then natural family planning is derived by a few different things. Standard billings are all based on your ovulation, kind of calendar method stuff. And then you have two day and some cervical mucus, some symptom monitoring and things like that. In general, with perfect juice, these are pretty good. Between one to 5% of people will get pregnant. With typical use, however, you can see a huge variation. And that is because a lot of people don't understand their cycles or apply these correctly. So that's really what we wanna to get to the heart of. All right, and natural family planning in general has also been called the calendar method or the rhythm method, essentially talking about when you're going to have or not to have intercourse. And then when it comes to trying to get pregnant, what we know is that anybody who uses any method of fertility awareness has a higher chance of getting pregnant per month than if you're using nothing. And I did a study even looking at OPKs versus BBT versus calendar method in a group of people who were trying to get pregnant. And the take home is they're all even, but better than nothing. So knowing your ovulation is going to help you more effectively get pregnant. Okay, so in your period, we are going to think of day number one is the first day you start bleeding. That's when you're having your menses, you're on your period. So your entire menstrual cycle is this entire time period. So menses is day number one. A typical period is going to last between four to seven days in most people. It can be shorter, it can be longer, but that's going to be on average. This time period between when your period starts and when you ovulate is called the follicular phase. This is when your body is growing an egg or growing a follicle because an egg grows inside a follicle. What is happening is the brain is sending out follicle stimulating hormone or FSH. FSH is well named and it gets an egg to grow or the follicle to grow. That follicle, when it gets mature enough, will be making estrogen and that estrogen when the brain senses that it is high for a prolonged period of time, will trigger the brain to send out what we call an LH surge. You're gonna get this huge LH surge, which is then going to cause the follicle to rupture and the egg to be released. And this is ovulation. 
After this, the follicle is going to reform and becomes the corpus luteum, which is a progesterone making cyst. In this half of the cycle, this is the luteal phase. And now LH is going to be secreted in pulses up and down and up and down, stimulating this corpus luteum to make progesterone over and over again. And I've got some good videos on progesterone and the luteal phase if you want to learn more about this phase specifically. When you get pregnant, this corpus luteum is going to help sustain that early pregnancy until that placenta is fully grown in around nine to 10 weeks. If you are not pregnant, what happens is that corpus luteum can only last for about two weeks, it collapses, progesterone drops, you get a period, and then the whole thing starts over again. So we think about our menstrual cycle divided into the follicular phase, ovulation, and the luteal phase. So your egg, once it's released, can only be fertilized for 24 hours. Sperm, however, can live inside the female reproductive tract for up to five days. So what we want is to have intercourse before and on the day of ovulation. And that entire fertile window is defined as the five days ending on ovulation. Now you can calculate this out, and this is part of natural family planning with the calendar method. If you say, okay, I'm going to take my cycle length, let's say it is 32 days, and you are going to subtract 14, which is the average luteal phase length, you are going to get your estimated day of ovulation. So in this example, that would be day 18. You would then target intercourse the five days ending on day 18. So 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. So those would be your target days to have intercourse in this example. In this example, your periods need to be very regular so that you can predict this. If you're trying to avoid, that would be the time period you would avoid if you're not trying to get pregnant. Well, because ovulation, may not happen. What if it happens earlier and you had intercourse up to that time period? To simplify it, there's something called the standard days method. So let's say that on your months, when you look back, your cycle length is between 26 and 32 days, never any shorter, never any longer. Then your fertile window days of range between these cycles is between day eight to 19. So if you just avoid intercourse between those days, you are preventing a pregnancy using the standard days method, on the flip, if you wanna get pregnant, that's when you target having intercourse. So that is an easier way if your periods have slight variation versus trying to stick to this precise calendar method. When you use an app and it's telling you your fertile window, it is using the 14 day calculation to try to give you what day this is happening. It'll start by predicting that based on what you put in. You'll put in the app, my normal cycle length is 32 days and it will calculate your fertile window. Then as you are marking your cycle length, the calculation will adjust based on how long your cycles actually are when you track. The cervical mucus method is a different way and that is where you are checking your cervical mucus, knowing that it is thin around the time of ovulation and then it becomes thicker and less permeable to sperm after ovulation. So in this method, you are going to notice the cervical mucus by putting your fingers inside, pulling it out and checking. And when it's stretchy like an egg white, that is considered your most fertile day. Now that is predictive, so it is a little harder to uh, use that for family planning, but there is something called the two-day method. The two-day method is if you had noticed cervical mucus yesterday or today, you should avoid or use a barrier method. And if you did not, then you should be good to have intercourse. If you are trying to get pregnant, you're gonna target the days you have that cervical mucus. And then the basal body temp method is a way to tell you when you could resume having intercourse again, because we know that that egg only lasts for 24 hours. It's also a confirmation of if you ovulated. So once that corpus luteum starts making progesterone, your body temperature is going to increase 0.5 to one degree Fahrenheit. That usually happens about two to three days after you have ovulated. So by that time, you can't get pregnant anymore because the egg has already passed its 24 hour time period. So if you wanna wait till you're totally in the clear, once you get a temp rise, then you are fine to have intercourse at that time period. Also, this temp rise is confirming that you did ovulate a few days prior. It's not helping you get pregnant in that cycle because you've already missed the window, but in future cycles, it potentially is helpful. And when you use wearables that are detecting your ovulation now, this is what they are doing, tracking your temp in one cycle and then applying it to your next one. Remember that BBT can change based on your world. So remember that a fever, drinking alcohol, and a variety of things can change your temperature. And it has to be taken first thing in the morning before you get out of bed with a special type of thermometer that is measuring it or using a continuous wearable. Remember 
that for all of these, what we're really looking for is that if you have regular cycles, whether you're trying to get pregnant or not, that's going to be the circumstance where these are going to help you the most. If you are trying to get pregnant, you know I also love an ovulation predictor kit and this is measuring that LH surge and I do have a video helping you learn more about that. But if you are doing an OPK, it's checking for that first LH surge. Once you get a positive, don't keep checking and you're gonna target intercourse the day of the positive and the next day. I don't see a utility in OPKs for people who are using natural family planning and it does tend to just up the cost. And what we're really looking for is a simpler, easier way to just monitor what's happening naturally. If your periods are irregular, these may not be reliable. If your periods are irregular, that can make it hard to get pregnant. In both of those scenarios, please see a doctor who can evaluate you for medical causes because your period is a vital sign. Hopefully this helped answer some of your questions about natural family planning and I'm happy to answer more below, so put them in the comments. As always, I appreciate you being here. Thanks for subscribing. Please share with others and you can find more information on the As A Woman podcast or on Instagram at Natalie Crawford, MD. Thanks, friends.